Huh? Teaching is my life. I like to teach. I always like to teach. Even when I was uh, in elementary school, high school, all, I always taught to my friends. And uh, so when I came to Turkey, it was in 1995, after the death of my father. I came to take care of the foundation. And I, was, I also started the math department at uh, Bilgi University. Uh, I had uh, uh, I had the idea of making something different of what exists in Turkey, something uh, of highest level. I have been in very good schools. I know people from very good schools from different countries. I know Chinese, I know Koreans, I know Russians, I know French, I know German. I, I have been at Yale, at Berkeley. I know what's a good education. So I tried to make something, I said, I will make something uh, out of uh, norms, uh, out of uh, standard ways. And I, I designed a curriculum which is very hard, yeah, the, the highest level, highest possible level, even higher than uh, Harvard, Princeton, uh, what, uh, Oxford, Cambridge. Yeah. Of course, I had I didn't I didn't think that I would have so much difficulty. But I had very much difficulty. Students were not ready for. Uh, they didn't know how to work, how to study. They didn't know what it means to understand, really. So uh, I took them at my home in the evenings. I taught them in my, in my place. And then during the weekend, this was enough. During the weekends, I took them to the foundation. They stayed there the, during the weekend, and uh, we worked eight hours a day. This wasn't enough. I took them during summer vacation to the seaside, to Antalya. We stayed there six weeks. It was very successful. It was very good. It was better than everything else I have done in my life. So I, I had the idea to repeat this next year. Repeat this next year for seven weeks in some other place. And then next year, for ten years in a row, I did the summer schools to my students. And the last three years, I opened this to whole Turkey. We have 70 to 80 students, a few professors, two or three professors. And it was very, very successful. Uh, First of all, we were having fun, and also we were studying. Uh, but it was very difficult to organize such uh, activities, because uh, first of all, you have to travel to Turkey, find a place to, to eat, uh, to sleep, and to work, to study. Uh, it's very difficult. So little by little, the idea of having a village. I don't uh, have the name of village. A place for us. You know, uh, something not very, very luxurious, not, you know, something which is, we will just come during summer and during winter Turks will just uh, uh, saccage it, take things apart and steal things. And uh, I, will, I will come back during spring and spend a few dollars. And, uh, but it's not the way it, 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 it went. Uh, we did something, a place which is much more beautiful than I thought it would be. <laughs> so uh, we couldn't leave it. So, and, uh, and it was so successful that it was I mean, a tremendous success that uh, we had to expand. Actually, I didn't need to expand. I, I wanted a small place, but I wanted the Turkish government to help me. I thought that they would help. I needed something like maybe $20,000 a year, not more than this. With $20,000 a year, I could make it. But it didn't help. Then I need to expand in order to survive. And now we are uh, much, much bigger than what I thought uh, we would be. And uh, still, it's not enough uh, because students really, they, they all want to come here. We have a program for 100 students, for example. There are thousands of applications. Yeah. Uh, it became really, it became a fashion nowadays in Turkey to, become, to come to the math village. I didn't plan anything at all. I don't plan. Things go little by little with needs. We didn't even plan the village. Yeah. We just did it. We need we, we need a place to eat. We need a place. We, we construct a place to eat. We need a place to, to sleep. We construct a place to sleep. We need a place like here uh, to study. We construct it little by little with no plans at all. No architect ever came here. No architect. No engineer. Uh, we just did it by ourselves, mm. and uh, with all well, the structure, you know, the, the way it works here, 
I didn't plan anything at all. I just uh, found good people. Only for the library, we looked at the, 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 the there was a book published, uh, a photograph book of the best libraries in the world. We looked at it, but actually we had the plan before, but we just looked at it and we didn't like that. <laughs> we didn't like the best libraries of the world, we did something of our own, because the best libraries of the world were too beautiful, too pretty, and we didn't want to have something so pretty. Actually, first of all, we don't, we don't have money, but even if we had money, we, I want something simple. Very simple. Uh, Sevan Nishanyan yes. and myself a little bit. I helped him also. Sevan Nishanyan is not, a, is, is not an architect. He is only a very able man, an uh, intellectual, who is right now in jail, by the way. Yes, I heard about it. You heard about it, yes. He's in, in jail for illegal construction. Uh, well, the whole village is uh, it's, it's a collaboration of uh, myself and him together. Very good. Sevan is very good. Uh, he's, he's, a, he's a very able man. He's, uh, He's a, uh, he's a philosopher by education, uh, but uh, he's a very able man. But we tried to make the houses as they are in Shinje, the Greek houses. Yeah, we didn't want to have something uh, out of nowhere. Uh, the, the local architecture, we tried to respect it as much as possible. In fact, it's impossible. <laughs> it's not really possible. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it shouldn't be like this. I don't know why it works. It shouldn't work normally. Maybe, maybe if we show the students, the children, they are young people. From children, the students who are here, they are 15, from 15 to 30 maybe. But 50, from 15 to 20 this is the most difficult part. Actually, I think we show them that we care about them, we respect them. Uh, you may not know Turkey, but in Turkey the young people are not so respected. They are not free, they, are, they always obey, they, they are told what to do. The parents send them to the mat village. They don't come to the mat village, the parents send them for most part. Most part. Uh, here we show them that we respect them, that they are worthy of respect. And I believe suddenly they change. I had a lot of experience of, of uh, young people who had psychological problems and nothing remained after they came to the village, nothing. Actually, we were surprised when the parents called us. They said, what did you do to our children? I said, what, 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 what can we do? I thought there was something bad that we did. Apparently, the child had psychological problems. He, he wasn't social, he couldn't speak, he couldn't raise his head. He couldn't look at your face. And uh, when he came back home, uh, there was nothing about all these problems. In days, I don't know what happened. I know there was a girl actually, uh, the problem that I told you right now. We didn't notice that there was a girl. She, the, the parents told, me, told us that. Obviously noticed that she was, there was something wrong with her. We didn't notice anything. We watched for this. Uh, each group of eight or ten children have a, a supervisor who tries to understand whether they have psychological problems, they have they fight with each other and so on, if they have any problems with understanding courses and so on. And we didn't notice anything. I don't know what happened. Maybe she fell in love with someone and uh, maybe maybe uh, during the course uh, she answered the question and I said, uh, bravo, very good, uh, you are very good. I don't know, something happened, something happened. Maybe this freedom here, I don't know. This, this happens very often, very, very often. often. Children, for example, who are not uh, aware of social problems, who don't care about social problems, about uh, politics, about uh, who don't read newspapers, who don't uh, help their parents at home, they change. They change. For example, uh, in the streets they see uh, they see a rubbish in the street. Uh, they collect it and they put somewhere. Uh, last year we had uh, uh, 7,000 visitors, last year. During summer? Not during summer, uh, during the whole year, 7,000. During summer probably 4,000. 4, 
Some students who come uh, when they first start the high school, they came every year for four years in a row, and also they came winters also. We also winter programs, so they came seven or eight times. Now these students who are finishing high school are taking uh, graduate courses. They are still in high school, but they are taking graduate courses. Uh, in the beginning, when I built the village, this was only for uh, college students and for graduate students. Uh, I didn't have, I, I didn't intend to teach to high school students, but there was so much demand that I, I, I had to start for to high school to teach to high school students. And it was good actually. I did good. Now, uh, if we had seven thousand students last year, at least five thousand of these are high school students. What do I want? I want them, of course, to study the math at least four years of college education and then they can do whatever they want to do. They can do into computer science, they can go into engineering, they can go into uh, accounting or whatever. I intended this village to be a village for 200 people maybe a year or 300 at most. Now we have 7,000. Now of course the, my, my intentions changed of course with the, with the people who come here. I cannot ask 7,000 people to, to become uh, professional mathematicians. And, but I want them to be aware of mathematics, uh, of, uh, of of its beauty, the abstraction. The most importantly, I want them to understand what it means to understand. Uh, because they don't know what it means to understand. They think that to understand means to be able to do it, to be able to solve the problem. They, they, the, when, when they come here, the first thing they say, tell me how to solve the problem. Should I add, subtract, multiply, divide? What, what should I do to solve the problem? I said, no, no, just understand the problem. Just understand what you need to understand. And this is what I want them to understand. I want them to, I, I want them to understand understanding, what it means to understand something. It's much simpler to understand math than anything else. The social life is impossible to understand. Economics is very difficult to understand. Math is so much simpler. Because it is, it is, uh, its rules are very precise. Its logic is very sound, and it is a, uh, it is a, uh, uh, independent of experiments. It's independent of the, uh, of the, uh, the, the, the uh, inflation at Korea. It's independent. It's independent of earthquakes in China. It's independent of uh, uh, how uh, the Parisian economics go, the French economics go. It's independent of the of anything. It's a closed circuit, it's by itself. And uh, so it's much simpler to understand. It's like a chess game. Yeah, it's, it's more complicated than a chess game, of course. But uh, it is clear. It's Everything in math is intellectual. Uh, it is independent of any experiment. It's, everything is, is intellectual. You, what you do, you, you look at outside. You look at the world, you look at the universe. You see how things work. Work. You try to see. You try to understand, and then you make a model of it. You simplify things. It's too, too complicated. You are a very complicated person. I am a very complicated person. You are too complicated. I cannot. I cannot put on, on paper everything about you. Your, your past, your future, your feelings, and your you. Uh, you, you change continu continually. Math is much simpler. You have a few rules. It is. It's the essence of the whole universe. It's the essence of the logic of the whole universe. Put on paper. Then you know what you must understand. Then, then you know that it's impossible to understand anything else than math. At least then you doubt yourself. You know, the, answer, the, problem, the questions that you can answer are only math questions. The, the question that you can answer positively yeah, in, is math questions. The questions that you cannot find the answers are philosophical questions. And if you don't want to ask any question at all, if you only want to say, I am here, then you do art. Art is something, is, is a kind of cry. A, you shout, 
it is a revolution it is a rebellion against your uh, uh, being powerless of uh, 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 being able to answer questions I am going to die where I am going to do why why do I, I exist and I, I believe art is a rebellion math answers questions that are answerable philosophy tries to answer questions that are not answerable <laughs> and art is a rebellion against all that and here we have math village philosophy village and art village Yes. Uh, well, this was this was my, this was my idea to have the same kind of operation and the same kind of behavior. But I noticed that the behavior of math students and philosophy students and art students are very different. They don't correspond to each other. Uh, the philosophy uh, students and art students they want to have more freedom. And uh, for math, math is much more scholastic. You have to be much more on the table, and you have to be in science. Actually, philosophy also, philosophy also, uh, art also. I believe uh, math, philosophy, and art uh, needs lot, lots of uh, uh, staying alone by, by yourself. Uh, these are uh, two professions uh, that need lots of solitude. Long hours of solitude, of reflection, of uh, of trying, and uh, uh, I can uh, enforce this in the math village, but I don't have, I don't believe I have enough energy to enforce this to uh, philosophy village or in the art village. I noticed this year that the behavior of the students in philosophy and in art are different from the behavior of the students in, in math. People who come in the math village are very serious. And they want to study and they want to understand. People who come to art and philosophy, they are not so serious as I see it. They think that it's easy. They think philosophy is about speaking about love. You know. They think that art is about painting and uh, uh, drawing you know, or, or being original. They want to be original. They don't know what it means to be original. They don't, they don't know how how difficult it is to be original. They don't know uh, to be original, how much not original you should be. But uh, students who come to math village, they are much more aware that they should study. They should study. People who come to philosophy village, they think that, or the art village, they think that just by speaking, just by their intelligence, with their intelligence, you know, they can question Hegel, they can question Spinoza, they can question this and that, they can prove existence of God or this and that. And this is... Uh, uh, unfortunately, I mean, this is what happens, and uh, I don't believe I have enough energy to put them into the right track. What I should do, I should choose the correct people who will direct correctly the art village and uh, philosophy village. Uh, uh, discipline is a must. You must discipline yourself. Uh, if if you don't work long hours by yourself and for years, for years and years, nothing will happen of you. Whatever you do, success success comes with solitude, with working. You have to work by yourself. The other another problem with the math students, they come here and they say, "Tell me a book, tell me a class, show me a course, teach me." They don't know that they can. They don't know that they should learn only by themselves. Nothing else can help them. I cannot teach to them. I can only show them the correct path. Uh, a book. They talk, They think that students think that I read a book in which everything is written, but I don't tell them. <laughs> I don't tell them. Uh, I, I I hide this book to myself. They don't know how much I studied in my youth, how many long hours, how many nights, sleepless nights I spent in in, in front of the books and in front of the paper and pencil. And after that, that you know that you know something. This is what we are trying to teach the to, to children here. What it means to work. Yes, I don't know how to how to do this. I mean, we are living all together, and they are living differently, and uh, this doesn't go together. 
I should find a solution to this. This is a problem. Yes, but we eat together, you know. And sometimes our students stay there or our professors stay there. They stay here. You know, I, they are two. They are not two separate villages really, although it looks like they're separated. But uh, we share the space, of course. Yes. But it's not good also to control everything. I, I think the philosophy uh, village and the art village should have their own uh, soul. They should have their own living space, their own attitudes, and so on. We should we should we should, we should be able to find a way to uh, coexist together, uh, respecting each other's. I don't know. Li life be sure. Life be sure. In general, I don't plan ahead. I look at the situation. I experiment, and uh, in general, I don't uh, intervene. Mm. Things uh, settle by themselves. Yeah, in general, you tell, you told, you asked me, how did you plan all this? I didn't plan at all. Mm. I just find the correct people, the right people, young people, good people, working people, and it, it just happened. Yes, of course, of course, of course, of course. Yeah. Uh, this, I think, this was, if I had any success at all, is finding the good people and uh, uh, supervising them in a correct way. I didn't intervene very often. Very seldom I intervened. I, inter I if I have to intervene, then most likely I have to fire this person. No, but I don't intervene. I don't, they don't even ask me permission to go for vacation, for example. They just go. They know when to go. They know better than I do. Uh, they just tell me, uh, the 15th of September, I'm going for vacation for one week. All right. Uh, because the person knows when, when, when he or she can go to, for vacation. Well, I, I was the chairman for 15 years of the math department. Mm -hmm. No one ever came to ask me for permission for, to go for vacation. One day we see the email from the department of uh, whatever, some. Uh, some department of uh, uh, employees or something. They said, uh, before going to vacation, you have to ask question. We have to ask permission from us. I wrote back to everybody. No one in my department asked any permission to anyone else except from me. And if I, I come to me, I I I, I just shout at you and then just go ahead <laughs> because I'm too busy. I don't have time to. You know, to ask for, you know, you come for, to ask for permission, I say, oh, yeah, I, did you teach this and that? Did you, you, did? I don't have time for this. Uh, so I wish people would do their responsibility, they would be responsible. So I presume this, I have to presume this, because I have no time otherwise. And people feel free, and people, when people feel free, they are happier, they work better. You know, if I tell them what to teach, if I tell them how to teach, if I tell them when to go to vacation, if I tell them when, when to sleep and to this, and they are not free anymore, they are slaves, and they don't like their job. Everybody here is you noticed, they like they love their job. There was a girl who left a year ago. She said, I want to have other experiences. I said, I know you will come back. She said, no, she is back now. Jaren, talk to her. A year after she came back. Sometimes people ask me, they say, we, we want to have a meeting about this and that. If you are available, we say, okay, you can come. And sometimes I ask people, for example, sociologists, I asked, I, I asked to a professor, I said, uh, can you have a program for one or two weeks? And I want the students to be uh, busy for at least six hours a day. And you can come with two other professors or three other professors or one assistant and so on. And you can also select your own subject. Uh, you can also select your own uh, staff, and also the, your own uh, 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 quality of the students. What age? What level? And so on. You say, yes. Okay. Then they make a plan. They write to me. This is the this is the uh, the the subject of the summer school or of the school, and uh, it will. Uh, be for two weeks, and I want students from 18 to 22, either last years of high school or the first two years of college, and uh, they will be busy for eight hours a day, and uh, with me I will have this person, this person, and this person, and they will come with their uh, wives or husbands, so, okay, and then we, pu we publicize this in inter internet, 
and the students apply. We send them to the list, they select the students, and the summer school starts. Not, not really. Uh, sometimes I meet a person, or I know a person, I know that this person is uh, valuable, uh, that uh, this person should teach to at the math village. Uh, this can be anything, this can be even, uh, I don't know, uh, even carpentry. This could be anything, it doesn't matter. If I see that a person is valuable, then I think that young people can benefit from this person or uh, glass making. Anything, anything, anything interesting, anything, any interesting person is welcome to teach here. Anyone who has anything to say. Nothing whatsoever. <laughs> there was only earth, storm, water. <laughs> This is what nature gave us. Nothing at all. There is nothing shiny. There is no gold, no silver. No, nothing which is uh, expensive or that will make uh, simple people frightened. Everything here is very simple. Plants, earth, stone, wood. As I told you, uh, 7,000 students came here last year. This year probably this number will go to 8,000 or 9,000. This is quite a number. And uh, the number of people that change a country is not by millions. It's a handful of people change, change a country really. <coughs> I believe the uh, uh, scientific, uh, uh, scientifics of Turkey or politicians of Turkey or businessmen of Turkey, or businesswomen of Turkey, of doctors, researchers, or in any field at all, in, 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 in science, even artists, I believe they will, in one day or another, they will have to come, they have to come, they, can, they have to pass from the math village. These people will be the uh, people who direct Turkey by teaching in universities, by starting new businesses, uh, by doing research, by being politicians. I think uh, uh, children who came to, to the math village will be the leaders of tomorrow's Turkey. I have a strong belief in this. More than this, more than hope, I know that. Yeah, of course, yeah, we are, I believe we are shaping uh, the future of Turkey. This institution is shaping the future of Turkey. Not so long, in 20 years or so, when they will finish their graduate studies, they, they will find a job they will in a university. Uh, after a few years, they will come back to Turkey. In 20 years, we will feel the, the, uh, the changes that Math Village will do to Turkey. In, 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 in scientific direction, in artistic direction, in political direction, towards the West, of course, Western. Based on the way of education we have, uh, not religious, uh, but even religious people come here. Maybe you have seen them, covered people, for no problem at all. Uh, even you know, uh, of course, also Turkey is a very dense country politically, left and right, religious and laic. They are fight each other, but not in this village. All kinds of people come here and they respect each other's ideas and way of living. During the Ramadan, we offer them meals during the special hours, for example. And if they want to pray, they want a place to pray, we offer them a place to pray. Uh, I, don't, I don't allow anyone to uh, uh, say bad words to someone else. To, I, I don't allow them to, to fight each other. They can discuss, they can discuss, but I don't allow anyone to say anything bad to each other because one is nationalist, other one is religious or otherwise a communist, otherwise a anarchist. Uh, I, I make sure that everybody respects everyone, everyone else's idea. This is a free space.
They know each other. It's very important that we know each other. If you know each other, if you live together, if you sleep in the same room, if you share the same bathroom, if you share the same classroom, the, sh the same table, and you cannot hate the other person. It's impossible to hate. It's clear that these people, these, these children, they're all good children. And they have maybe different backgrounds, they have different levels of uh, living, they, they have different ways of thinking, uh, but they are all good children. They, they, they know each other. Uh, a religious person before maybe he or she thought that someone who is atheist is like a devil. They come here, I'm atheist. They know I'm, a, I'm open atheist. Uh, I'm not a bad person. Yeah, it's clear. And, uh, and they get to know each other. And uh, Turkey becomes more and more a place where uh, it's very difficult for different ideologies to live together. But not in this village. We are trying to make something different, and we are successful in this, very successful in this. To create something, what, what do you mean by creating? You mean by creating, you mean how many times one person create in his life or her life? How many times can you create something really original and testing? Two or three times at most the most successful ones. Other time, uh, normally, what you do in your uh, everyday life, you do things by habit. You know what to do. Uh, if you are a painter, you know how to paint. You don't create each time. Maybe you may call this creating, but it's not really creating. You know, a painter in his life, you can create a style, and then you repeat the style. You know. uh, how many times Einstein found something in his life? Two or three times. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Not more than this. The rest of the time you solve problems by usual thinking. That's what I tell to my students. Don't try to be creative. You, you, cannot, you cannot try to create. You cannot force yourself to create. Just learn the usual thing, usual steps, usual uh, thinking, the usual ways. Actually, sometimes, for example, I have a problem, I have a theorem to prove. I know that there's a solution, a very creative solution, very short. I don't do this because it's not, it's not, it's not useful. I do the other one. I do the long proof, the proof that almost everyone will follow. You, know, you, you, you see, in everything else, in math also, there are some uh, ways of uh, methods of solving problems. Okay, you ask me a problem. I look at the problem, I see, okay, I do this, and then that, and then that. I have four steps. In four steps, I can do this. And then now I have to work. Okay? I do the four steps. In five pages, I, I say, here's the result, five pages. This is the standard way. Sometimes, someone else, a very clever person, finds a solution, very clever solution. This solution is useless when it comes to education. Because in math, you don't need to be so clever. You cannot be so clever all the time. Between this place and anywhere else in Turkey, any institution in Turkey, mm -hmm. is that in this place, the uh, young people are important for us. We, we, we care about them. Yes, uh, we try to foresee their needs. If we cannot foresee, then they tell us and uh, we obey. For example, this place, this is called uh, Working, uh, Working Hills. Uh, students told me, well, uh, there are too much noise by night. We cannot find a place, a, a, a calm space. Uh, to work. It's okay, we build this place. Yeah. And sometimes, for example, they say oh, there, there are not enough bathrooms. We must have bathrooms. You think it's something simple, but it's not so simple in Turkey. In, in, in Turkey, if you go to schools, you will see a building and nothing else. There is a uh, just empty space. Not a tree, not an armchair, not a chair, uh, no fountain, nothing at all. 
here we try to understand the, the children's need. And when they come here, they, they have never seen a place like this before. They, they have never seen a place where all these, these places, all these trees, uh, all these armchairs and everything, it's just for them. It's not for stuff, it's not for me. I'm not going there. It's for them. It's for their uh, well-being. Uh, because we, we, we like them, we respect them. We think that they should enjoy life and they should enjoy math together at the same time. And they have never seen, we take care of them. They, they are important for us. We respect them. And as soon as they, they set their foot in the village, they see that we respect them. They see everything there, here, is for them. If you go to Turkey, you will see rubbish in the streets everywhere. Not in this village. Not because we clean it, because the children don't put any trash in, 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 on the ground. Because they say here is a different place. As soon as they come here, they change. Suddenly they say, "I am worthy of, uh, I am worthy of, uh, of, of, of." Uh, they show me respect. So I'm a respectful person. I exist. They speak about our village. They say our village. They don't say math village. They say our village. They say my village. For example, they say, uh, they say, sir. Uh, do this uh, land belong to us? <laughs> the first hour, so this this village, I don't have money to, to build such a village. This money, this, this this village, was built with the money of people, of simple people, very simple people, not of the rich people. Yeah, they, they gave donations of 100 livas, 10 livas, 20 livas, little by little. And they worked here, uh, students worked here, children worked here. Children of 14, 15 years old worked in this village, in the construction of this village. We were in the beginning, we were around 50, 50 children here, from 40, 14 to 25. We worked all together. We had no money. <laughs> from the Nessie Foundation, uh, children, that, my, my own children also, and also the students from other universities, we were around 50 sleeping in the tents, cooking uh, under the stones with the uh, outside. Yes, of course, why not? But I have other plans. I am planning a scientific high school here in this village, not village. Mm. A scientific high school with the same spirit what do I mean by the same spirit? As you notice here, a uh, place to eat, place to sleep, uh, library, uh, the classrooms are not separated really. Now, normally in boarding school, one building is for dormitories, other building is for classrooms, other building is for refectory, you eat there. But here is not so. Uh, it's like a village. It's a real village, except that it is for education. You know, in the morning, you wake up, you open the, your door, just opposite to you, there's a classroom. Next to you, there's another classroom. There, there's a place to eat. And then you, you, go, you walk a little bit, you see a few person there studying together. Right? This is the, this is the academician's village, maybe. Yeah? Where teaching, learning is every, every, every day's uh, activity, every hour. We don't say, you learn, that's what I mean. The learning should become part of life, part of everyday life. You know, the academic life should be your behavior you know, from 24 hours a day. You know, even when you, you, you are having fun, even when you are playing tennis or whatever, you know, it should be everyday life. It shouldn't be something like, on your, yeah. like, people who work from nine to five. From nine to five I study and then I, I have fun. No, it should be every day, every, every hour, every time. It should be part of your life. I want a scientific high school where teaching and learning will be every day, will be part of the life of every, everyone in the village. For example, the teachers and the students 
we, we live in the same village. Yeah. The students will live here, the house for the students, the house for the professor will be next. They will eat together. In the evening they will be together. They will play chess together. They will play soccer together. I believe this should change the idea of education in the world. Not so much this village. This village is nice, it's good, but it, it, it doesn't have too much to give to the world. But I believe the scientific high school, if I have in mind, if it is successful, then I think it will be, uh, it will change uh, people's idea about education. How education? I want, I want this uh, scientific high school to be a very prestigious one. I want the highest level science to be done there. First of all, we need money to run the village, for you know, food and so on. Uh, for this, we collect money from the students. Students who can pay, they pay. Students who cannot pay, they don't pay. You know, we don't force anyone to pay. If they say, I'm interested in learning math, and I want to come to the village, but I have no money, we say we are welcome. Uh, we also need money for the construction. For the construction, I, can't, I, can't, I don't have so much money. You know, the foundation doesn't have so much money. It's by donations. People donate. Uh, until now, we had uh, only uh, two or three big donations, otherwise it was all small donations. Too many people, lots of people, little money, but uh, we had lots of donators. Simple people, employees, simple employees, even even elementary school students, you know, they, they, they give from their pocket money. This will be another adventure. This has been an adventure because running a high school is too expensive. I don't know how I will, I will manage this, but I will manage it. I will, I will find a way of doing it. Mm. I may ask, I may go to big industrials, uh, ask her for yearly money from them. Now they become, now they become, for last, uh, this last year, I, I had a, we had a prize, Matt was a prize from a coach. Uh, one of the big, uh, one of, not one of the, the biggest uh, industry of Turkey, and uh, Saban Jos is now interested, and uh, little by little they are, uh, because in fact, <laughs> what's funny is that you know this village is completely illegal. There is an order of destruction for the whole village. We didn't, they didn't give permission to the village to construct the village, so I constructed uh, illegally. So I may go to jail like my friend any time for. It constructing illegal village here. And uh, data, these industrials that help me now, uh, they try to do the same thing, but they didn't, they couldn't get the permission for education, of course, because they, they each own a university. Right. Uh, they have lots of money, they each own a university, good universities, and they, so if in a seaside or in a place like this, they want to do something like this. Uh, they were not able to. Because they, they were afraid of uh, constructing illegally, of course. But this was the plan of my life. You know, if an employee, state employee tells me you cannot build such a village, do you think that I will listen to him? It's possible. If when you have such a such an original idea, such a good idea, such an excellent idea, who can ever stop me from building this village? From pursuing this idea? You know, this is you know, this is the meaning of my life. Who can, who can take from from me the meaning of my life? I mean, yeah. Oh, oh, economics is too difficult. It's much more difficult than math. Now I'm a little bit interested in economics, and I see how difficult it is. It is uh, it's certainly a science. But not like math. It is that, like right now the Chinese market that is going down, and the whole the American market goes down also, European market also, and suddenly uh, Fed decides to raise the interest rates. Uh, it's too complicated. Not only economists, sociologists, uh, doctors. Uh, 
physicists uh, housewives mm. yeah, good educated housewives yeah. when you are a teacher you don't only teach to your students you also teach their grandchildren their grand grandchildren you teach people that you will never know you will never meet yeah. this is a good thing about it you never teach one person, you teach this person's children also, and their, his grandchildren also. Yes. When I was uh, 13 years old, I believe, 13 or 14, I decided to become a, to study math. This is not very uh, true, this, this is almost true, but not quite true. Uh, I was in the United States, a professor at the University of California, and my father had a foundation. Uh, he didn't want me to come to Turkey because he said, you're a scientist and a scientist should be in the United States. This is the center of the sciences. Don't come to Turkey. But years passed and he got older and older. He knew that he was about to die. And he had no other chance but uh, me coming to Turkey for the foundation. And he, he wrote in his will, he didn't want, he wrote in his will that, uh, a, a math institution institute should be built under the uh, supervision of the Mason Foundation. Just so that I come here and that this is not, uh, I don't come here, you know, I don't forget my own, uh, that I continue my profession. But the uh, institute is, is not, it wasn't possible. The economic situation of the foundation wasn't, couldn't allow it at all. And this was written in the will, but it was forgotten at all. And years later, I, I started in a math village, and suddenly I realized, I thought, oh, my father had a will like this. I'm a teacher, I'm a good teacher, I, I, know, I, I like to teach, as I told you, and I, I also know math. So, uh, it's the, you know, the good combination for the math village. Mm. Exactly, this is exactly the problem in Turkey also. And this is what I, I told you before, that students don't know what it means to understand. They know what it means to solve. They know what it means to give the correct answer. But they don't understand what it means to, to, to understand really. To understand the concept. How it, where it comes from. How it is formalized in math. How it is defined. How to use it correctly. For example, uh, some students, they have never seen proofs before. They know the theorems, they know the statements, they take them as granted, but they, they don't think that there's a reason behind it. It's here that they learn that there's a reason behind it. And some are amazed. Some are amazed. I see some children come here, they are young. I say to them, so are you, good, are you good in math? He says, no, I'm not good in math at all. I'm terrible in fact. I say, why did you come here? He says, I want to give a last chance to math. And they come here and they love it. They love it. Their whole life changes. Children from 15 years old to 18, 19 years old, they are in the same class. High school first year and high school last year, they are in the same class. They don't need, we, 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 we don't assume any background at all. The will to learn. That's the only thing we assume. The will to learn. The students should want to learn. They, we all have the same brain. We don't assume, we don't presume any knowledge, any previous knowledge. We start from zero. Because normal school, there's a curriculum. You have to know the previous year's math in order to follow next year. Yeah. It's not like this year. We start from zero, from scratch. We don't presume any, any knowledge. We don't assume trigonometry, for example. We may teach trigonometry, yes, it's possible. Although we don't, we may. But we don't assume cosine, sine, tangent. There was a there was a group. Uh, just this uh, just it ended last su last Sunday. There were around hundred students. This was our last group, and this was the easiest uh, schedule, the easiest curriculum. So it was easy. I was much more lenient, I t t tolerant. I accepted students who that I knew that were not very good, but that they wanted to learn. They came, and I taught the first day, second day, and I asked my wife, is this a camera joke? 
because I'm explaining to them, to the students, and they don't understand. I'm explaining, I'm, I'm explaining 50 times, they don't understand. But they were very good students. They were asking questions and they were silent and they were listening, trying to understand. Second week, they changed suddenly. I, I, I started to teach something else. I started to teach set theory, much more philosophical. I, 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 I discussed about the reality outside of us, a reality in math, how the reality outside is related to the reality in here, how do we see, how, how are we sure that the reality there is really reality, how do we know something is real, something is correct, something is right, and how do we do, know this in math, how do we translate things that we see outside in mathematics, in the language of mathematics, this lasted for seven days, I taught for seven days. And children were amazed. All of them. All of them. There was a big silence. And there was a big applause in the end of each class. <laughs> they, they, were, they, were, they never thought that something, something like this was possible. Now, I showed them the essence of math. The real beginnings of math. How, how, how you, you look outside, you try to see what kind of world you are living in, and you are, team, you are trying to make something, a formal model of the outside world. Like for example, suppose you want to check how strong your building is towards earthquakes, that it can resist to earthquake of 7.6 uh, at Richter scale, not, but not to 7.8. Or nine. How do you, you don't shake the building? <laughs> the height, you don't shake the building. <laughs> what do you do? You go home, you take you make calculations, right? What do you do? You you made a model of the outside world, a theoretical model, right? Something uh, something that comes to algebra that you can compute. The reality is there, and here there's some theoretical. Now you say, oh, this building can resist maybe to seven point six at least a scale earthquake, but not to 7.8, certainly not to 7.9, and it's more or less correct. Now you with the airplane, and you say, no, it's going to fly, don't worry about it. How do you know? The airplane never flew before, it's first time. But you did calculations by hand, you know that's correct. So how, how is it possible? How is it possible that what you calculate corresponds to reality? Why should be true? But these students were really amazed by, by, by what they by, what they, they learned. Uh, they opened their vision. Yeah. I can't find myself. Uh, in the beginning, I found the first few people. Then now they find other people. I don't. I, I never hire. I asked the other workers to hire. Because they are the one who run the village. I only supervise. I intervene very, very well, as I told you. You know that the children who come to the high school programs, uh, a few years later, they come here to, bec to become uh, supervisors of the young people. You know, because every every dormitory, every every ten person, for example, ten children, have a big brother or big sister who supervises them who tries to understand whether they have problems, whether they, they fight with each other, as I told you before. And uh, all our uh, big brothers and sisters were students uh, a few years ago in the village. Well, uh, maybe they don't understand all the time. I have to tell them, for example, this place is dirty, as you see here. And I don't like this, and I will go back I will tell them that uh, I don't enjoy this this is not a uh, this is not a place that I want to come and work this doesn't uh, this place doesn't attract me uh, for example or sometimes sometimes a, 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 a lamp doesn't work and they don't see it sometimes a tree is dying they don't see it I have to intervene sometimes I have to tell them but uh, most of the time I, sometimes I try not to tell them I, I want them to see. I asked them, I said, every day, once a week, you should go to a place, stay there for one hour, and try to look what is wrong with this place. 
how can I make this place more beautiful? For example, I said about this thing. There are children here. This is for electricity, something like this. Day. I said, they should be closed. Well, I said this yesterday and they are still open. I, I'm, I'm trying not to be angry. I know to whom I can be angry. <laughs> but I tell them what kind of village I want. Uh, for example, uh, there's a group of 200 people and uh, there's lunch time. There's a huge queue. And they don't care about it because they have seen the same behavior before in their school. There were 200 students in queue. After two hours, you have time to, to help yourself and then the meal is cold. And they don't care also. I tell them, look, please do care about them. Yeah. Yeah. Make something that, that will make your, their life easier, simpler. If there's a line of 200, then please have another serving table. So that, you know, or three of them maybe. But do, try to do something. And if you cannot, just tell me. I have a problem. Uh, I, uh, uh, there's a big line in during lunch times a big line and uh, I can't reduce this line, what should I do? Then I will try to find a solution. Yes, uh, some volunteers most likely. Or sometimes children of the workers come here.